There we go. Whoa, did you done tweeting, buddy? What are you laughing at? <laughs> I'm ready for you. I'm all ready right, for all you, All right, Scott. well, look. All right, you, look, you got to get the new. Listen, well, I, I used to make fun of Schefter for tweeting instead of talking on TV. You got more followers on Twitter than we got people watching us now. But I appreciate you joining us to tell us how this deal came together. Because it appeared earlier there would be three teams involved that would include the Clippers and Malcolm Brogdon. That didn't happen. So how did this get done? And then how did Smart end up getting moved? I'm surprised by that. Uh, well, Scott, when, you know, probably around 10, I guess maybe 10, 15 tonight Eastern, you know, Boston decided that it was going to move on from those three team talks uh, with the Clippers uh, and the Wizards. Uh, the Celtics were going to send Malcolm Brogdon uh, to the Clippers. Uh, and when they just couldn't get that deal finalized, they pivoted. And Washington uh, started to talk uh, again with Memphis. There had been some conversations. And Marcus Smart had been a player uh, the Grizzlies had targeted for obvious reasons. You see sure. how he fits with that Grizzlies uh, roster, uh, bringing in his veteran toughness his experience in the postseason, his leadership, all elements that they really wanted in Memphis, Zach Kleiman, uh, their GM. Uh, and so uh, they moved on to that deal. Tyus Jones, their point guard, uh, who, uh, you know, they had been talking with a number of teams about. He goes to the Wizards, gives them uh, a point guard that uh, they could have in the last year of his deal. And then two first round picks from Memphis to Boston. They have a bushel of picks in Memphis, and they've, you know, they've tried to use them in some big game hunting. But Marcus Smart, a player that Memphis sees, they can play him. Certainly he can fill in for those 25 games without John Morant. And then those are two players who can play together. And then Boston gets what they had wanted all along. Chris Stapp's Porzingis along their front line. He opts into uh, that $36 million in his deal. And uh, all of a sudden, you've got something of a blockbuster here uh, on the eve of the NBA draft. Yeah, no doubt. But it's, it's, as I sit here, Woj, you've been, you know what this is, is a giant wall, and I'm just looking at it. And as you mentioned, now this gives the Wizards a point guard. And I'm thinking, well, they just traded for one, didn't they? Chris Paul. But obviously, that, we understand what direction that might go. But in smart, I understand the fit culturally, the identity of who he is 100%. But I just wonder, you got to give to get. Was this a tough was this a tough bridge for Boston to get to to have to get to have to let Smart go? Absolutely, and and that's why earlier they were ready to move off of Malcolm Brogdon, uh, you know, another high level point guard. But certainly, you know, Smart has been such an intrinsic part of that Celtic identity. Right. Uh, they're the great defensive teams they've had here, and certainly he's just done nothing but get better and better. Uh, but this is a team, you saw the emergence of Derek White this season, and you are starting to see now teams reckoning with uh, the new salary cap and this term that you're going to hear a lot of, the second apron, that teams are going to have to stay away from. You can't pay everybody. They've done a remarkable job of gathering talent in Boston, uh, of developing it, but then there come hard decisions. And this was a hard decision for the Celtics, certainly, uh, again, you know, Derek White now playing I think an even bigger role in Boston. And, and now they get two first-round picks for him. They can certainly, number 25 tomorrow night, Boston was not in the first round. And listen, we know the, the, the cost of this Celtic roster with a potential five-year $290, $295 million Supermax deal for Jalen Brown looming. Right. Um, they can't pay everybody. Right, they can't. And, and what's Przingis? He opts in, but this is one year, right? So, I mean, it's in, it's in a rental. So what's that leave for him? Yeah, I think that remains to be seen. Certainly gives them a dimension, Brown and Tatum, um, uh, having him in the middle. J.J. Redick was talking about it earlier on our pre-draft show. Just a, uh, a pick-and-pop dimension and certainly having uh, uh, a player like him along with Robert Williams – uh, again, this gives them a tremendous amount of depth on that front line in Boston. And, you know, this is a team right now with the Celtics. They are trying to win a championship, uh, multiple championships. They have a window to try to do it here. And bringing in Porzingis was important to them, uh, but they did not do it without giving up a player who has meant a great deal 
to that organization and a player in Marcus Smart. You know, all you needed to know about how much he loved being a Celtic, you know, he dyed his hair green. Yeah, he did that. I would, too, if I had any, but I don't. Uh, Woj dropping bombs at midnight. I appreciate you. I'm sure we'll be talking again tomorrow. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Scott. Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.